Well, it didn't go well, <laughs> to say the least. I have an altitude hold problem. have to fix that before I go back and try it again. Uh, sorry about the noise in the background. They were irrigating the fields. You can hear the water gushing. It flew okay and stabilized, but when I put it in altitude hold, uh, he didn't want to stay at altitude. It certainly wanted to come down, so I raised the throttle, raised the throttle, raised the throttle, and it did the same thing it did here at Dallas. It was shooting for the moon. Not really shooting for the moon, but when I took it out, it stabilized it did, just like it did at the house. So it was just, it wasn't me at the house. I didn't do anything about hover. Uh, and wouldn't you know it, right in the place where there is no sod is where I had to hit. Such be life. So I didn't like that auto hover learn or whatever it was from the seven inch so i didn't even do that on this one i guess i should go back and do that now because uh, this is not workable i started back towards the car and noticed that the grass wasn't growing very well here at all and figured it wouldn't get any more dust on it i just set it down here and try again Altitude hold. Stabilize. Altitude hold. So again, I was doing the throttle up, trying to nudge it a little higher. I wanted to get it about 20 feet off the ground, but I, I just couldn't get it stabilized. So at least it landed in good grass this time. Three strikes and you're out. I can handle it in stabilized mode. It works for me in stabilized mode. So I just have to get it working in altitude hold and go back and try it again. So that's when I gave up and hung it up. I didn't want to damage the flight controller by bouncing it around. So let's go look at some telemetry logs. I got two. I only powered down once. I flew it twice on the same log. Don't have to connect to any platform or anything. Go over to data flash logs. Well, real quick, I did see one thing that I thought was positive. I'm trying to find the positive here right now, people. <laughs> in advance, that FFT, if I go in and give it a telemetry file, I get nothing. That's because I turned that function off. This proves that function was turned off. It's no longer uh, recording data, which cuts down on CPU load a lot. So. This is just verifying in my mind things that I think happen are happening. So that was a positive. Data flash logs, do an auto analysis on the first log for kicks and grins. Uh, no auto tune log data. Didn't get that far. 
Test brown out good. Compass good. Mag interference within limits 0.96%. Duke data log. Throttle never above 20%. I disagree with that, but. And then the rest of this doesn't matter. Just do that same thing real quick on the second log. Just looking for any glaring errors. And speaking of glaring errors, I don't understand what this one is. And mag interference was a little less that time. Still thinks throttle not over 20%. So now we'll go in here and review one of the logs. We'll just go with the first one. And we'll look at my input from the control sticks RCN for throttle. And you can see right here's where I turn on altitude hold. Turn this junk off. Uh, this was stabilized mode, and this is what I was doing with the throttle, which was pretty much working. Uh, when I put it into altitude hold, I immediately nudge the throttle up. You can see by a good percent trying to keep it from going down to the ground. It was 20 feet off the ground. It shouldn't have got that low. Something wrong here. You can see right here. Again, I don't know if the leading edge of this text is where it goes back into stabilized if it's the center of this text or the end of the text. I'm going to assume it's the start of it. And right here is where it went back in stabilized. And evidently, I pushed the throttle up again or it was already there. I think it was kind of in this same place. In my humble opinion, it hadn't moved. So... This is where I was walking to pick it up. <laughs> uh, oops. Ah. Come back here. Ah. We'll just load that log again. RCN. This was the second little test out there because I had not, I didn't power it down. Try to get these down here moved out. So this was on the ground, it was in altitude hold. I just put it back in stabilized here. Here's that stabilized takeoff. Here's where I put it in altitude hold again. I will go back out here and look at that. So I stabilized right here is where I took off. And again, I can handle it in stabilized mode. It just seems doesn't bother me at all. But right here again, Again, we're going to go with the leading edge of that text. Right here, I put it in altitude hold. There I am immediately trying to keep it from going down. And I just didn't mess with it much this time. Right here, put it back in stabilized mode. Uh, and let's look at what, for kicks and grins. Let's overlay this with what the flight controller was doing on the throttle channel based on what I did. So you can see the throttle channel was fairly much following me. And then, right, these two, it was definitely above where I had asked for it to go. Same thing out here. This is getting closer. I'm not sure that hover learn isn't turned on. We'll look at that here in a second. But... I didn't let it get as far away from me the second time here as the first time. 
Uh, I was prepared for it. And let's look at the third little flight. I did pirate down between those two and pirate back up. And that created a second log with a single flight in it. Oops. That was a very short one, as you can see. I just didn't mess with it. Actually, it was a little longer flight. I just didn't have to do as much uh, trying to control it. We'll do the RC out in a second here. Stabilize, take off, flying it around, getting it, trying to get it 20, 30 feet off the ground. Not high, not low. So it would stay there the whole time and put it in altitude hold. We'll say right here. Looks like I did drop the throttle at that point. That's what shouldn't drop the throttle completely. You should in the old days you set your mid throttle. Which is what I was going to do with this one. Uh, I just hadn't done it yet. <laughs> And here's back in stabilized and where I flew it back to the ground, even though at one point I had to throttle a little high there. I was ready for it the second and third time. The first time, I didn't think it was going to do what it did. It did that at the house here, but I blamed that on me. Still blame it on me at the field today. But let's see if we can find... A way to correct this problem. Oh, put the throttle out from the flight controller on top of it too. And see the, the throttle out on the flight controller is way higher than I'm telling it to do. Not sure why. You can still look at vibrations. Oops. RC in, we'll get rid of that. RC out, we'll get rid of that. We'll just go up here on the accelerometers. Uh, and see what accelerometer X. Well, I am you, X, I think that's forward and backwards, not sure, see I don't have much problems in that area. Although it did go out and back a couple of times. Why? I think that's roll. I guess a Z would be yaw. I didn't do much with yaw. Not sure about those. Look at the gyros real quick. Yow! What's going on there? Why is there no data in this area? this area and in here and here it's pretty strange isn't it Charo mm. it isn't missing here but it's still flat I don't understand that it could have been when it was on the ground yeah this is when it was altitude hull and this was when it came back out and was on the ground okay so that's why that's that way and I would say this in here is probably when I was carrying it walking back towards the car but why does this have actual brakes of no data in it it's pretty strange to me and Z don't see anything crazy crazy there ah <sighs> 
quick altitude. Yeah, we definitely saw that, didn't we? <laughs> GPS altitude should be about the same. Mm, yeah. Uh, so right now, I don't have any idea what I could look at more in here. Look at the power. Oops. Huh. Load a log. This one. Power. DCC. Boy, evidently it doesn't record that. Hmm. RSSI. <laughs> anyway. I don't see anything else I can look at in here. That would help me at this point. So, let's go look at some documentation. So, we'll come in to the documentation here. Copter, first flight in tuning. And we're actually right here, first flight. Now, part of this I didn't do. I did not like that auto hover learning dealy on the 7 inch. So I decided to ignore that on this one. Might not, should have ignored it. Um, and I was going to try to do it the old way, which you can go in before this hover auto learn or whatever it is. Uh, I saw it only like recently. Before, years ago, uh, you would go in and actually read out a throttle value from your telemetry log. And then you would set that into a perimeter on the platform and it would let it hover at 50% throttle. So you knew where... Uh, a place on the throttle stick was that you could take it in and out of altitude hold, stabilized, any mode, and with the stick in that area, it wouldn't do crazy things. Like if you were in altitude hold, uh, one of the first problems I had when I started flying quads way back was I would put it in altitude hold and then I'd push the throttle to the bottom. <laughs> Uh, a couple of times of taking the platform out of altitude hold and destabilized and it just fallen to the earth. Uh, I realized one day without any help from anybody or documentation or anything, wait a minute, you dummy. You're consciously lowering the throttle to zero uh, when you go into altitude hold. That's not what you want to be doing. I was afraid it would fly away, so I was going the opposite of fly away, all the way down to zero. Uh, it didn't take me but about three flights to figure that out. Every time I came out at altitude hold, wham, on the ground. What, what, what caused that? I was really great back then. And then I realized what I was doing, so I started, when I went into altitude hold, I would put it at 50% throttle. Well, when I took it out of altitude hold, then I would have either it going up, not real fast usually, or down, not real fast, but one of the other directions. And that's when I found in the documentation how to set that uh, mid-throttle hover. So because all this in this new version, seeing I didn't build quads for five years, uh along with the notch filters which I'd never seen before was this automatic hover learn or whatever so I figured I wouldn't do that on this one 
I would actually try to do it the old-fashioned way. Well, it looks like that's not going to work because I can't get a good altitude hold and don't want to bounce this thing up and down on the ground and damage the gyros or the accelerometers in it to the point where it won't fly because those will just take so many G's of slamming into the ground and they quit working which isn't a problem on somebody running acro mode on beta flight because you're not really using them that much anyway at that point I'm a whole different flyer I'm using stabilized in our new copter this is more going to be a camera drone is what I'm setting up right now yeah I'm going to do some freestyle with it in acro mode but first of all it has to work properly as a camera platform a little short range camera platform is what I'm looking for here so looking back at the documentation here they said of course place the copter on the ground connect the battery do not move the copter until gyroscope calibration is completed LEDs flashing red and blue that takes place really quick <laughs> not sure you can really step away from the platform until that's doing what it should do but anyway I don't I didn't have a ground control control station hooked to it today either because it's a crossfire telemetry over wire Wi-Fi that doesn't work so good so I just went out to do the auto tune uh, ensure you're in stabilized mode. Slowly raise the throttle and the copter just lifts off the ground. So what you're looking for here at this point in the first flight, as it says here, if it seems like it's going to flip or otherwise isn't lifting straight up, it is possible that you've set the wrong orientation, hooked up your motors in the wrong order, have prop directions wrong, uh, all sorts of things. Uh, If any of the controls are diver reversed, pitch, roll, or backwards, it moves in the opposite direction of your stick movement, then you need to reverse your channels, get all that. that that's just something everybody does. Uh, and let's say it lifts off smoothly. You, smoothly you may see a little yaw yeah that's normal that shouldn't be more than about 30 degrees and will correct itself with more and more flying time there should be no pronounced warble mm. <sighs> if there is you may have an unbalanced prop or out of tune motor yeah you might not you might just have bad PIDs for the size frame uh, the D term could be really aggressively trying to stop it if it wobbles around a little bit. What you're looking for there is just no unflyable wobble. Copter should also tend to stay in place. You shouldn't have to fight moving left, right, forward, or back. I don't. Uh,. If you're having trouble and the copter is not hovering smoothly, run through the troubleshooting guide. Assuming that all is fine, you're ready for more advanced modes such as altitude hold and loiter. I don't think you are at that point. These are your first flights. <laughs> I would get that out of the way first. I did go over and look at troubleshooting and there's a lot over there. I'm not going to go over it bit by bit right now if there is a lot of wobble in the platform it can cause so much inconsistencies in the accelerometers and gyros that the platform will try to compensate with throttle giving it more throttle uh, I'll run over there and show you that real quick so there's a lot of things could be wrong here there's a lot in this list i'm going to hit it real quick can't get the motors to run or arm the escs i don't have that problem apm 2 is locking up well i'm not using an apm 
copter tilts, flips, or waddles, wobbles crazily when I take off. No, not having that problem. My overpowered rocket copter rockets into the air and can't be brought down unless I cut the throttle. Uh, this starts talking about the copter firmware may the copter firmware may may try to compensate for this roll and pitch instability by increasing the overall throttle, which can lead to the copter climbing further. See, that could be at that point for me the PIDs not being right and the wobbles caused by uh, the PIDs just being wrong. Uh, and it'll cause the thing to go up and on its own, and it may be quicker than you want it to be. Uh, add extra weight, reduce the throttle min perimeter, set some roll pitch gains. That's not really where I'm at. My copter motors spin, but the copter won't take off. That's not me. My radio setup isn't reading the channels. My copter isn't as stable as I'd like or doesn't loiter hold altitude. Now that one does apply to me. Every copter is different, and even the official kit can have differences in motor performance or balance, depending on how you've put it together. So we've made it relatively easy to tweak many of the performance settings to tune, turn your copter perfectly. I think that is supposed to be tune. <laughs> That said, tuning is something of an art, so it helps uh, to read a bit more before you start tweaking. There's a guide to PID tuning here. Eh, I'm not really there. Copter tends to fly okay, but tilts one way or another. Not me. Copter moves in a direction even though the stick is centered. Not me. Quad always wants to yaw to the right and left when I take off. Eh don't know yet. Quad always wants to yaw when I pitch a roll. My copter flies well, but then dips a motor arm in a fidgety manner while hovering. Haven't gotten that far yet. Uh, one of my motors starts shaking, <laughs> started shaking and then burned out. Not yet. <laughs> my APM board. No, it's not what I've got. Raw sensor. Ah, uh, I can't connect to Mission Planner, can't connect with 3DR radios, I'm having trouble connecting via Mavlink over USB, ACs keep beeping, I'm not getting GPS lock, I want to load our Tweeno, my copter just won't rise, lift off, feels sloppy on roll or picks axis, no it doesn't really, I was having trouble with yaw, Mission Planner's HUD display moves around, uh, my copter's moving a lot on the Mission Planner map, even though it's sitting still at my house. Not me. And all told or loader, my copter is very bouncy or takes off into the sky. Yeah, that's sort of what I've got. Copter uses the accelerometers heavily for calcul calculating altitude and altitude and climb rate. Hmm. Vibrations from the motor can cause the accelerometer values to become very noisy and throw off the altitude estimates. I'm sure that isn't attitude estimates. <laughs> anyway, could be. Could be a typo there. Such great documentation. Some of it comes and gets to be a problem from being... Uh, Transcribed from one language to another. Uh, the solution is to reduce sources of vibration from your frame. Built prop adapters, motor shafts. Move hard connections between the frames and APM by using vibration damaging products. Uh, this does talk again that vibrations in accelerometer can become very noisy and throw off. I think it's attitude estimates, not altitude estimates, but that's okay. <sighs> As a version 2.9 of copter, inertial navigation is used to maintain altitude. 
Okay. I, I think there still is a problem here instead of altitude. I think it's attitude. The way the the angle of the platform, in my humble opinion, is what they're thinking here, but they're saying a different thing. And in 2.92 horizontal position as well, so vibration truly needs to be minimized. Well, of course it does. If you've got too much vibrations, you can't trust what the accelerometers or gyros are doing at all. And then they talk about vibration compensation here using standoffs, O-rings. Uh, and they show you to look at a graph here. I'm not getting enough flight time to look at that much yet. My copter slowly rises or descends when I enable altitude hold or loiter. Well, it isn't slowly. The throttle dead band in altitude hold or loiter is from 40% to 60% of the throttle. See, that's what I'm talking about. There's a whole 20% in there. When you go into altitude hold or loiter, your throttle is no longer linear like it is in stabilized mode. A large change in throttle is going to result in a small change in the true throttle. They see it as a dead band here in the middle. If you have an overpowered or underpowered copter, then when in stabilized mode, the throttle required to maintain a hover may be outside this range. Yes, so that's what I'm fighting against and trying to compensate for. In the first flight today, yeah, when it goes into altitude hold and you stick that throttle up there, it just really went up like it did here at the house. And then when you put it back in the stabilized, boy, that's a high throttle for out of altitude hold mode so it zooms up ah. the simple solution is to move your throttle back to center as you engage altitude hold I learned to do that years ago when it works correctly a permanent solution is to modify throttle mid perimeter using the mission at planners advanced perimeters list screen uh, this wasn't exactly how it used to be done in the old days. <laughs> we actually went in and hovered the thing. Went into the data flash logs and read out the throttle position that it was hovered at and then set that directly in a perimeter. Now they're using advanced perimeters list screen. It's not even over in the regular parameters it looks like anymore changes since last time I built one if your copter hover at if your copter hovers at 40 percent of throttle stick when in stabilized mode make throttle mid equal to 400 that's kind of what we used to do if it hovers at 60 make it 600 etc so you're trying to set that mid throttle so that when you stick it physically at mid-throttle, it's mid-throttle, and you should be able to go in and out of altitude hold or loiter and stabilized, and it doesn't change much. I've always been able to do that before with everything. But, again, we'll get into just a second that auto hover learn or whatever it is that I was trying to stay away from with the 5-inch. I did do it on the 7 Distance to home on Mission Planner, Mission Planner. I don't care if they say anything, Mission Planner here. So this goes back to the, what I did see in here that relates to my problem goes back to vibrations. And right now I think the vibrations are from improper PIDs. I thought I had them under control enough to do an auto-tune. Maybe I don't. <laughs> might approve this afternoon I don't so going back to here make sure you're in a wind free, free environment eh, it was fairly unwindy this afternoon make sure you have no trim in the radio hold the copter still and level after connecting the battery gyroscopes to initialize I actually let it sit on the ground Get above ground effect, three to four feet is enough on most models. Be sure to practice a lot before you actually 
try the auto trim to find the sweet spot on our right stick to have the copper copter super stable and not moving that's where the wind will affect your inputs ah. I think this comes with experience which I guess is practicing a lot we recommend not starting in simple mode, begin your flying in the basic stabilized mode. That way the copter will be held level by the flight controller if everything's set up right. It'll move whichever direction you move the sticks in. If you take off with the copter facing away from you, uh, it shouldn't be a lot of surprises. Uh, copter establishes home at the time of arming. Warning about low batteries. Okay. Go over to the next one. Oops. First flight. Uh, let's see here. Huh. And they pop out over here. <laughs> tuning process instructions. Initial tuning flight. Initial tuning flight. Going down throughout here. Pilot should not take off an altitude hold until the altitude controller has been tested in flight. This should be done by taking off and stabilized and then switching to altitude hold. While altitude hold is really a problem unless the aircraft has a very low hover throttle. I think that's what's going on here. <laughs> this thing's just really tweaky because it's a race slash freestyle platform in truth it's not really meant to do uh, be a camera platform i'm trying to tame it down and make it into a camera platform it really isn't especially with a 6s battery on it it's not uh let's see for initial flights, the pilot should ensure these perimeters are set. AT3 throttle max, min, man, to this, motor thrust hover to or lower. Configure the emergency stop. Yeah, I've done that. Do tuning flights in low wind conditions, normal weather, no rain. Practice stabilized flight in a simulator. I'm pretty good with all this. I didn't do all this. And First flight. The first takeoff is the most dangerous time for any multi-copter. Care must be taken to ensure the aircraft is not destroyed in the first seconds of flight and nobody's injured. Perfectly. Perfect statement. Beautiful statement. Yes, of course. You can have your sticks in the wrong motion, channels reversed, all that stuff, and be trying to move it away from you and pull it right into you. So yes, until you at least know that the thing is going forward and you push the sticks forward or backwards when you push the sticks backwards it's really unsafe sure all spectators and pilot is a safe distance uh, the flight will allow you to set up the aircraft in a flyable for tuning state I'm sure stabilize mode arm the aircraft immediately disarm to ensure your disarm procedure is correct, I um, tested all that. Arm the aircraft slowly and increase the throttle, looking for signs of oscillation. Long or flexible landing gear may cause some landing gear oscillations that will go away after the aircraft leaves the ground. As soon as the aircraft lifts off the ground, immediately put the aircraft back down as gently as possible. Disarm the aircraft. That's just to make sure all that works. Evaluate what you observe to decide if you need to make adjustments to the tuning pre perimeters or if it is safe to take off again. Arm and increase the throttle to initiate takeoff. Hover it 
about one meter. Apply small five degree control inputs into roll and pitch. Let's make sure they're going in the right direction. Immediate land. Immediately land if any oscillations are observed. You know, I do have ops oscillations, but I think they're from PIDs again. Next section will explain how to remove the oscillations. Initial aircraft tune. The first priority when tuning a multi-rotor aircraft is to establish a stable tune free of oscillations. This can be used to do further tests. Arm the aircraft and stabilize. Increase the throttle slowly until it leaves the ground. If the aircraft starts to oscillate, immediately abort the takeoff and or, uh, and or land the aircraft. Remove, reduce all the following perimeters by 50%. These are pitch and roll values of PIDs. This process is repeated until the craft can hover without oscillations being detected, detectable visually or audibly. Uh, you know, I really don't have that. I think there's a little oscillation in it, and I think I can hear it too, but back before I got to feeling so bad I took a little break when I built this up I, I think I cut those PIDs in half like three times I'd have to go back and look at the video and I can go and look at what their default rate is and compare it to what they are now but I, I think those are that way Ah, uh, let's see. Beware that in this state, the aircraft may be very slow to respond to large control inputs and disturbances. Yeah, it may be fast to respond to them, too. The pilot should be extremely careful to put minimal stick inputs into the aircraft to avoid a possibility of a crash. Yeah, you don't want to horse it around and cause so much vibrations in the accelerometers and gyros that it decides, the flight controller decides to add throttle for you. So, now here's where we get into this motor hover learn. This test will allow to test the altitude controller and ensure the stability of your aircraft. Check motor hover learn is set to two. Let's run over there and look at some of these parameters real quick. Doo -doo -doo. Mott hover. Um, o T H O V E R. Learn. It is two. So learn and save is on. That's by, that's the default, by the way. Don't like it. I was trying to get away with not doing this. Check motor hover learn is set to two. This will allow the controller to learn by itself the correct hover value when flying. If it's set that way the whole time, I think it keeps relearning it. Of course, if it gets close and then each subsequent flight is pretty much the same, it doesn't vary far, but if they're widely not the same, it could change it too far in my opinion. So I was trying not to use this, but I didn't turn it off. I left it at its default. Take off and then stabilize to increase altitude to 5 meters. 15 feet. I'm looking for 20 to 30, but that's neither here nor there. Which switch to altitude hold and be ready to switch back to stabilized. I am. If the aircraft is hovering at a very low hover throttle value, you may hear a reasonable fast oscillation in the motors. I do hear an, an oscillation change. Ensure that the aircraft is spent at least 30 seconds in hover to let the hover throttle perimeter perimeter converge to the correct value. Okay. Land and disarm the aircraft. Well, so far I haven't been able to get a 30 second hover. It's either going down fast 
or up fast. Sure, the aircraft has spent at least 30 seconds in hover to let the hover throttle perimeter converge to the correct value. Land and disarm the aircraft. Set these perimeters on the ground and preferably disarm. A confident pilot could set them in the flight with a ground control station or CH6 tuning knob. Mm -hmm. So, need to look at these values. If altitude hull starts up, starts to oscillate up and down, the position and velocity controllers may need to be reduced by 50%. Uh, we may have something here. These. Let's see. The position and velocity controllers. So this would be the velocity. This would be position. I think right here may be what I need. May just be what I need. And then the motor hover learn being set to two should take over after that. So we check this. And I think I'm chasing this learning around when I'm doing the throttle. Well, I couldn't keep it off the ground. Maybe I should have put it in altitude hold a little higher. But the thing's a little 5 inch and it's so small I don't want it to zoom up and get out of my eyesight. So, motor thrust hover. It's down to 0.2 from a 0.35. Hmm. It looks like the platform is noticing that I'm having to push the throttle higher than it even wants. So that, this value to 2. Two times motor thrust to hover. So is this one at point four? No, it isn't. I to two times motor thrust to hover. So that's at one where it started out at one it hadn't changed acceleration vertical controller I gain hmm. so two times motor thrust hover That would just be point 0.4. It's up at 1. That's two and a half times what it needs to be. So, and this value should be motor thrust hover, which is... Point two. And that's at point five. It's double. 
Motor thrust hover. I think this is all where it is. And let's see, these two values. PSC underscore. Oh. PSC underscore POSZP right here. It's at its default. So that's your controller again. PSC velocity Z underscore P. Uh, five, that's still a default. Converts the difference between desired vertical speed and axle speed into a desired acceleration that is passed to the throttle acceleration controller. <laughs> Gonna have to think about this and smoke it over again. So. Then it goes into notch filtering here. But this, I think my uh, uh, answer is on this page. So I'm going to have to think about this for a while and decide how I'm going to change it for my next, next test flight. And I will tell you about those changes just before I fly that test flight. So that'll be in the next video. All right, guys. Thank you.